Avant d'aborder les spécificités des Before we go into the specific features of maritime renewable energies, I'd like to describe how they are being developed in France, in Europe, and across the world within the group of renewable energies. First of all, obviously, everybody is increasingly aware of global consequences of uh, global warming because of uh, greenhouse effect gases and carbon dioxide emission. If we do nothing, by the end of the century, the temperature will have risen by six degrees. A much more optimistic scenario limits the temperature increase to two degrees. But for this, we need to use several parameters, including the use of renewable energies, which should account for 25% of the effort. The rest would be covered by a better energy efficiency carbon dioxide uh, storage, uh, greater use of nuclear power plants, uh, cogeneration and optimization of the use of fossil fuels. Renewable maritime uh, energies are not often included in prospective projects. If we look up close, 50% of wind derived energy, maybe a bit more, will be uh, produce offshore. Also, maritime renewable energies are counted among other renewable energies, such as the geothermal uh, energy production, and they represent a relatively low percentage. Although they represent a physical type of renewable energy, this energy comes from the interaction uh, between the Earth the sun and the moon, the first interaction is gravity. It causes tides in the seas and oceans. The second type of interaction provides more energy. It is the sun radiation, which uh, warms up ocean water, but also warms up the atmosphere. And in the combination between ocean and atmosphere warming, wind is produced, waves are produced, and tidal wave and wind energies constitute the greatest part of maritime renewable energies that I'm going to discuss now. We're talking about a complex mix of energies with different ways to recover the energy, different technologies, and uh, the technology maturity is spread evenly. For a few decades, we've known how to use the uh, tidal motion energy when the tide produces a sufficient tidal range, a dam can be built that then will function the same way a hydraulic power plant would work. Before about a decade, we have uh, observed, especially in the North Sea and in the Baltic Sea, the development of offshore windmills in the relatively shallow waters and uh, wind turbines are developed offshore. And also another type of energy is hydrokinetic energy. Underwater currents are used to drive uh, the blades of underwater mills. So I said uh, that this uh, type of a machine has a lesser degree of maturity. Only a few prototypes have been tested. The same goes for floating windmills. But floating windmills are going to take over from uh, bottom-mounted uh, windmills when the sea depth increases. The uh, floating platforms are inspired from the uh, oil and gas rigs, uh, and they can support windmills. We also must mention maritime thermal energy. This type of uh, energy recovery uses the fact that in intertropical water, there are different layers of water between the surface water and the bottom water. There is a temperature difference that can be um, used to produce energy. The plant is a floating type of plant. And uh, although it might sound surprising, the type of energy recovery technique that comes in last position is the wave energy. Uh, system. The maturity is not very advanced because although some prototypes have been tested, there are still there is still rather difficult to uh, make a reliable system. Osmotic pressure is also something that can be used. In some places, sweet water is uh, rejected into the sea, and sometimes the osmotic pressure can be used to drive turbines, uh, but this can only be done in very specific places. 
je vous ai parlé de maturité et on le voit I tout de suite maturity. sur ces diagrammes. And we can euh, see immediately on this bar graph. Euh, Sur, sur which type of um, Alors, y a de system has reached maturity. Here the systems are connected to the grid and only a few thousand megawatts for bottom-mounted uh, towers Europe, in northern uh, Europe, mainly. Uh, for tidal uh, energy, uh, Asia and Europe are approximately on the same uh, level. The US uh, are progressively uh, coming uh, into uh, the play. But there are two main plants in the world, the one in the Rance uh, that has been uh, in use for decades. And uh, now there is the uh, South Korea plant with 254 megawatts, whereas the Rance is only 240 megawatts. For hydrokinetic energy, only a few megawatts are being produced and uh, injected into the grid. In Europe, and basically essentially in the British Isles, essentially in Scotland. In Scotland, there is a test area in the Orcades, uh, north of Scotland, where prototypes are being tested for uh, wave energy and uh, tidal energy use. So why are we interested by maritime renewable energies in Europe and in France? Because these resources are abundant and they are easily predictable. Yes, they are intermittent, but they remain predictable and constant in terms of power released. Now, there are dangers, there could be international crises, but otherwise, um, all we need to uh, buy are rare earths to make the permanent magnets and the rest of the uh, materials that go into their insulation is still concrete and labor. France has uh, understood that uh, this could lead to blue growth, and France uh, having a naval offshore capacity, an industry, it is uh, looking to find a new way to use this industry. If we need to slow down on uh, nuclear power plants, then we can use these uh, technologies for maritime renewable energies and export them. And also there are niche markets. Uh, sometimes uh, islands are not connected to the grid or remote places also are not connected to the grid. And in those places, the cost of electrical power is very high. Renewable maritime energies could and already have offered a competitive option, alternative option to produce electrical power for these islands. Let us talk about costs. We have to discriminate between the initial cost, CAPEX, capital expenditure. Capital is invested for the design, the study, the building and the installation, and possibly even taking into consideration dismantling uh, operations. Here we see that uh, bottom-mounted uh, windmills, because they are ahead of the other technologies, have capex uh, costs in the lower region. However, once the windmills are installed, or the uh, plants are installed, there are OPEX, operational expenditures, to reckon with. And now maritime energies are very specific because they need ships, labor, so maintenance costs are relatively high, and there are also sometimes fees to be paid because uh, these plants are normally installed not in private properties but on the maritime domain land, so sometimes fees need to be paid. Finally, insurances represent a cost because these systems have a reliability issue. One of the objectives is to reduce costs, but insurances among, are among the uh, operational expenditures. The final cost at which the energy is produced, the so-called LCOE, levelized cost of energy, includes amortization of the initial investment and operating costs. The costs are very high for renewable maritime energy. We're talking a few hundred euros per megawatt hours, 180 to 400 approximately. And the whole industry aims at reaching a level of 125 euros per megawatt hour in 2025 in order to become competitive versus the other renewable energies and also considering that fossil fuel and nuclear 
energy are going to become uh, more expensive. This being said, once we have uh, laid the economic considerations, we also need, need to look at the technical issues on uh, where to place them and how to uh, operate them. First of all, they need to be profitable. When we have a sufficient quantity of energy resources identified in areas where there are more waves or currents or winds, we also then need to try and not go too far into the sea when the uh, water depth or bathymetry increases. Uh, obviously, installation is uh, less expensive when sea levels are relatively shallow. And finally, we need to uh, have uh, connection points in order to inject the produced uh, power into the grid. And also, we need to consider regulations. Fortunately, uh, people are aware of the need to protect the environment and uh, try and mitigate the potential impact of uh, maritime uh, energy um, recovery on the environment. And uh, even offshore, not uh, anything can be done anywhere. We have to consider maritime traffic, uh, also air traffic, which are regulated and have priority in some uh, places. And there are also military area, and defense has priority. And um, traditional use such as fishing uh, or shell culture need to be considered. And uh, aggregate extraction from the uh, seabed must also be considered in order to be compatible with uh, maritime energy use and not to mention leisure activities. So for each of these parameters, the maps are drawn in order to define optimal areas where the uh, plants can be installed. And before the uh, installation is authorized, some laws and regulations need to be uh, looked at. For instance, we have the Natura 2000 uh, at sea law. When energy is being produced from renewable resources, especially, especially intermittent ones, it is necessary to provide evidence of the quantity that can be produced and the quality of the current that will be generated. So that is an, another constraint and an authorization that needs to be obtained. C, as I said, is not in the public domain. It's not in private domain. It is a public domain. So studies must be carried out in order to avoid disrupting the maritime traffic and to measure the incidence that this may have, not to mention the cost of dismantling the, the plants if necessary, which is something that we don't need to factor in for inland power plants. In summary, maritime uh, resources are relevant. France is a maritime country. The industry uh, can be developed. And uh, France has a uh, second uh, exclusive economic area in the world, so this can also serve as a uh, shop window. The environmental impact is something that we care about, fortunately, in France. There are many rules and regulations uh, so that uh, the environment is adequately protected. But according to the first feedback that we've had so far, the impact on the environment is quite limited. And uh, a few prototypes were tested in France and Europe, and social acceptability is quite high. Secondly, we have the uh, liability issues. Very few externalities, a limited economic risk. However, I have not said so far that through uh, maritime renewable energies, we can uh, obtain a basic uh, minimum uh, supply of electrical power when the peak consumption is reached. And finally, maintenance and sustainability and installation are such that we can uh, make uh, strategic uh, installations. The natural potential is abundant, and also we have the necessary electrical grid, which in France would allow to absorb massive uh, maritime renewable energy uh, production.